the United States Marine Corps' finest in the battle in the Pacific, the Navajo Code Talkers. Let's go. I went to recruiting office in Gallup, New Mexico. I enlisted the Marine Corps. I went through the boot camp like everybody else. Now, can you imagine back then how hard they were on him? An Indian isolated if he was from a reservation. You don't have the same interaction as you would in a big city. The Marine Corps boot camp then, obviously social justice warriors weren't allowed. Snowflakes didn't need to apply. They were pretty strict. <laughs> they sent me to a confidential area. I walk in here, a whole bunch of Navajos. The Sergeant Benali says, you hear a coat talker school. You're going to be a coat talker. You're going to help us. October. I'll now imagine they're like, why are these guys recruiting me? Native American, Navajo. Because the idea in 1942 was a genius idea, which we had used in World War I. But these guys took to it and were very proud to serve. Some coat school by November. 5th Marine Division activated. By December, I was already signed out there, the combat unit. So finally, we head out overseas. We're going somewhere. They told us we're <laughs> going to Tokyo. Now, can you imagine? You're from New Mexico. Time period. You're not traveling all over the place. Most people didn't then. All of a sudden, you end up in the Marine Corps on a ship in the Pacific Ocean going to Tokyo, you know, that was the idea that we're gonna go all the way to Tokyo, happened to be Iwo Jima was in the middle. <laughs> we work every day, we memorize and send messages as fast as we can. In February, we were told we supposed to land on Iwo Jima, February 19th, 1945. They were bombing, strafing by the airplane. They were hand-to-hand -hand fighting. You got to figure communications, intel, are some of the first things you want to wipe out. Now, I don't know if the Japanese knew we came up with this idea of, hey, we'll use Navajo to communicate the language, which is not written. No one knows it but the Navajo. Happened to be this man in 1942 who grew up there, whose parents were missionaries. All of a sudden, we have communications that are unbreakable and securely encrypted. I was really terrible. I had an awful feeling. <laughs> and the first shot, one of the coat tucker got killed. Coat tucker were wounded, and there were 33 of us assigned to 5th Marine Division. So it was really sad and scary. You don't know where the motor's going to land. Now you see this guy, hardened combat veteran, Iwo Jima, right? It's no small battle. He's like, it was scary, you know? <laughs> He's not playing tough guy. He's not Captain Phillips in Call of Duty. He's not Rambo. He's like, shit was scary, brother. <laughs> On the north side of the island, a company of Marines were pinned down real badly. They were being fired upon from three different directions. Mortar shells were being dropped down. They were hunkering desperately in the foxhole. Company commander wrote down a message asking for help, handed to a Navajo code talker. This is what the Navajo code talker said. This is the actual message that was sent on Iwo. Depe ana hachimpi datish kahi de na sonse. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I can imagine. Think about this for a second. Think about if you have like a chesty puller or some old crusty marine. They hear Navajo spoken. They'd be like, what in the hell son is that? Until they realize what the use of it is. That the Japanese nor anyone else can translate it and steal your comms. I think we need to use the Navajo language maybe today to avoid hackers. We'll be ended up, we'll end up there. This is what he said in Navajo. Sheep, eyes, nose, deer, destroyer, teeth. <laughs> 
<laughs> mouse, turkey, onion, sick horse, three, six, two, bear. As each Navajo were. Now you've all seen legends, right? Where it's like a football play. Omaha will mean something. And maybe each one of these animals means something. Let's take a look because I find this very intriguing. There's not much said there beyond some random things maybe there's a legend for. But if there's a legend, somebody could steal it, right? So another Navajo has got to translate this. It came through the air. The code talker down at the beach command post. He writes it down in English. What did he write down? Send demolition team <laughs> to hill 362B. There were three hills on the north side, 362A, 362B, and 362C. Beneath 362B was the problem. This message took 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, Beach Command Post organized a rescue team to save that company of Marines. If that message was sent in English code, it would have taken 30 minutes. 20 seconds in Navajo, 30 minutes. Now that's amazing because no one can crack it. You can just say what you want. So if it was Morris code, he's saying that's 30 minutes. If it's another type of code, you gotta get the information, then you gotta crack the code. But if it's like me and you speaking, and someone doesn't understand our language, we can cut to the chase pretty quick. That's the beauty of this Navajo. Now I've met a Navajo years ago after I was out of the Marine Corps. He was one of the 400, and these are some of the proudest men and the most honored to be Americans, and the most honored to be Marines. No complaining, no bitching, no whining. Very refreshing. An English coat. Those guys pinned down on North Side didn't have 30 minutes. Just keep low, go in and fix up communication, equipment, a radio. We sent close. And the radios in those times weren't like we're used to with the cell phone, the huge antennas for UHF radio. Now, if they were just going from ship to shore, or you had people on the side of the mountain, you've got a whole litany of problems. Point being, they were a very high visibility target. 800 messages. There were no mistake. That's how we work. There's a coat talker. But you always remember what you did. All the things you went through, you went from place to place on the ship. And there were Japanese submarine, there were suicide. I know I became so sad that nothing had happened to me. I was protected by the Marine. They were protecting us, we were protecting them. I was lucky. I'll tell you what, these guys are very humble. And they, you know, he said he was sad. You know, imagine that today. He's not saying he needs, he's depressed, he's got PTSD. Sure, he's a sad guy because of all the things he witnessed. But you don't see a lot of excuses or blames, right? Never once said, I grew up in a shitty place. I was poor. I was discriminated against. Just said he, you know, it was a tough road to hoe, as we all know, in Iwo Jima. But some didn't get lucky like those got killed on the beach. Without Navajo, Marines would never have taken the island of Iwo Jima. That's how critical Navajo code was to the war in the Pacific. And we should never forget what war is. War is something that nobody wants. Now you hear that coming from a man who was in Iwo Jima. You know, a whole different world away of battle. There is no big base. There is no internet calls home. He's not complaining. He never once said he was discriminated against because he was Navajo, because he had darker skin, because he didn't grow up rich. Very happy to be a Marine. Very happy to have served during that time in World War II. These are the kind of guys that really warm my heart when I watch these old Marines. It's bad, it's ugly. But so long as we are together, 
no matter what nationality you are. If you are American and love this country, we all have to stick together to keep this nation. I vote for him for president. He's not trying to create division. He's not saying, look at me, I'm a Native American, I'm a victim. He's not saying I was poor. He's just saying, we're all Americans, we need to love this nation. And of all people, he's got a reason to complain, right? He's just proud to have served in Iwo Jima and proud of his people and his Marine Corps. Strong, our freedom and liberty means so much, meant so much for those who never made it home. So it's up to us now to keep this nation strong and prosperous.